Big Lord to the John McGraw's Giants. <clears throat> Mr. Nice, but he was a great coach. And here's the old uniforms. Here's the, uh, it's John McGraw's trophy there. Baseball bats and the big trophy. He was their manager. He kept the World Series from happening in 1904. He hated the American League, called him the Junior League. That's why they called him the Junior Circuit. And there, there is him, I believe, as a player. And he was young. With the Oklahoma Orioles, right? They were great. They cheated after one got kicked out, but they they won a lot of championships with the Orioles. They were good before there was a World Series. Um, but here's Christy. I know he was a giant. He pitched for, uh, for John McGraw. He was an amazing, amazing player. Um, he won 30 games three years in a row, 1903 to 1905. And there's the old unis. And Boston Red Sox emerged as American big power, like I told you, the beginning of the last century. He won in 12, 15, 16, and 18. He also won in 1904. First World Series ever against the Pittsburgh Pirates. When was their last World Series before the 2004 win? You're looking at 1918. 18. Yeah. Um, here's their old bats and balls. And I would, I'm surprised, Tris Speaker. I'm really surprised that Ruth is not in there. He's got to be in that picture somewhere, you know, because he was their pitcher. Can you find Babe Ruth? Yeah, I don't think anybody can find him. Um, that was his first year, I believe. So he should be there somewhere. But he's, he's in it, or maybe you know, knowing Ruth, he probably thought doing something else. Contract. Oh, a whole $2,625. Yeah, that's back then it was a lot, though. You're laughing at it now, but back then it wasn't. So. Oh, Shoeless Joe. There you go. Say it ain't so, Shoeless Joe. Yep. There's the Black Sox. So, what, what's your take? Was he involved in your opinion? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think the. I think some of their pitchers were, and uh, you know they just got involved with the mob because nobody, um, uh, Trubisky wasn't paying them, so they tanked it. At the end, they regretted it and they tried to win, and they almost pulled it out. He's a great. Player. Wait, he's not in the Hall of Fame? No, because they associated him with the scandal. Yes, and I mean they're kind of putting him in, slipping him in there little by little, but it's, he's out. It's not. Here's that old one. So that so this event can't be understated. It almost destroyed Major League Baseball, right? Oh, it absolutely did. If it wasn't a big group, then what would have been down and out? And I told you that's when they got Landis to be the commissioner. He stopped all the corruption. I mean, he had his flaws too a little bit, but he just stopped the corruption. That can't be overlooked. They were the best team in baseball at the time. You know what's funny? They won. This is funny. They won in 1917. And then the Red Sox won 1918. And when the Red Sox won in 04, the White Sox won in 05. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. When was the White Sox uh, championship prior to the 2005? What was the last one before that? Uh, it was in 1970. So they almost. So they had a giant streak too. They had a, they had a big one, yeah. They had a that's real something big one. else. Yep, they did. Um, and now we have uh, the rivalry of the Red Sox and Yanks. Purple Yankees? Purple Yankees. This is what happens with you know the first 20 years they were the Highlanders. Still got my bag. Okay. I got your um they were the Highlanders and uh, for 20 years because they played in the Highlands. Huh. They played in the Hudson Highlands? Hudson Highlands. Wow. And, I didn't know that. Well, ha the word Harlem means it's Dutch for Highlands. Nice. That was that way because when they founded it, that was that because Wall Street's down in the bottom was low. Low the water on the water, yeah. But as you keep going up, the, the elevation goes up. Okay, makes sense. So it wasn't just buildings that were talking about. Never knew they had a different name. Yes, they did. And then they moved them over to the Yankees in 1913. They changed their name. But for those 20 years, they were really, you know. Um, That's a good name, though, the Highlands. It's good, good. Probably needs to make a comeback in some, on, in, on some team. Originally, some sport. they were kind of a renegade Baltimore Oriole team. They moved, became the Highlands, and then became Highlanders, and then became the Yankees. But um, and it wasn't the original Orioles that I talked about before. This is a different franchise. Um, Here's uh, Ruth, uh, and that's his first manager. Miller? Huggins, yes. Uh, he died right after the season in 1927. Ruth had to be a year. Uh, these lights beaming off the glass are oh, no, preventing us from seeing the, the, the yes, I pictures. Know. I know, I know. Um, there's Tony Lazari. He, he was amazing. He was the guy that – he was a second baseman, and he was the guy that uh, 
Grover Cleveland team back in 1926. Struck him out with the bases loaded. And um, the Cardinals won in 20. The Cardinals actually have the winning, only team that are going to have a winning record against the Eagles in the World Series. No other team does but the Cardinals. They do. And that was one of those wins in 1926. He was a hard guy to strike out. But, but Grover Cleveland, I was there, had one good year left in him, and he got him. Um, here's, uh, here's Ernie Combs. He was part of that great Yankee dynasty. They all were great. There's Garrick, of course. Herb Pinnell. He was actually a pitcher and a heck of a um, – Rupert stole him from the Red Sox, too. Because you notice, like, for 20 years, the Yankees, they went in Boston Donnelly. But what, what Rupert did was he had all the money because he was a, a bootlegger. So he stole he, – the owner for the Red Sox was not um, – he, he cared. He didn't care about baseball. And he just went up there. He stole everybody. He went, he goes, I, nobody thought baseball was ever going to make it. Lou Gehrig's mom told him to, to become um, an engineer and get out of it. There's no money in it. So nobody ever thought it was going to hit. And uh, back then. And, but, you know, that owner, Rupert, he went up there and he made his deals. Not only did he, he got a lot more than he got. And he got, um, usually got a lot. And he even stole their GM, who was getting all those guys for Boston for 20 years. So Yankees are pirates, really. They stole it. But that's true. Um, Raise the black flag. The Yankees are coming. Yes. As a matter of fact, they were pirates in more than one way. In the 40s, they had more money than every team combined in the league. And, like, the Yankees would go to that. If they needed one player from another team, they'd go, give us your player or we're not going to pay for your uniform. Because we got like, we pay for your uniform. So they go, okay. And they would just give them the best player and keep winning. That's absolutely true. Okay, so we have the Giants here. The New York Giants. The last throw of the New York Giants. Yes. The first two years, they beat the Yankees in the World Series because the Yankees State wasn't open yet. And you want to hear the, the funny part? You know who beat them the one year? It was Casey Stengel playing with the Giants. Did a home run against them in the World Series. Years later, he ended up becoming a great you know, manager. But on, on that day, no. He knocked them out. In, in 23, the Yankees finally did play him three years in a row. And finally, in 23, the Yankees got him. Ruth Parks, a couple of home runs. That's how. That's why they called the House, house of it has that name to this day. Um, here's Casey. He also played on that Giant team that helped beat. Oh, there he is. He helped beat the Yanks in 1922. Um, Frankie Frisch was on. He was a great player. Um, and all these other guys all chipped in. I would love to have It's a baseball hat. It's right a there. baseball hat. Um, and, then, and then the Senators, because this team was so great. But the Yankees struggled. Now the Giants played. What was the name of the stadium? Uh, the New York Giants. Yeah, Polo Grounds. It was Polo Grounds. Yes. Where did the Dodgers play? Uh, Ebbets Field. Okay, Ebbets Field's Dodgers, Polo Grounds, yeah. the Giants. You know the funny thing about these guys, um, they were great for a couple of years. And the one in nineteen at the end of the nineteen twenty four season, when Washington won the American League, the owner went to Ruth. Said, oh, I paid all you guys all this money, and Ruth looked at him and goes, "I can't win every year." You just can't. And, and they were in the World Series in 1924 and won it. 1925, they lost. They lost to the Pittsburgh Pirates in the fog, which is one of my favorite ones because they, the guy hits the ball in the game seven, the winning run on third, the game tied, and the outfielder never saw it. The ball just dropped in, and the guy walked home, and the series was over. And the Pirates took him out. But they could have won two years in a row. They were crazy. They really were. And we got, and we got the Pirates, who were also good. You know, um, I believe they won in 1909. They they beat, I want to say they beat Oakland four straight. Um, but they were in at 1927, as you saw. Um, they snapped the giant string of pennants. Um, they played the Yankees, they got swept. That was the big and little poison year. Uh, but and here's some of their, their bats and, and their gloves. But they were a good team. See, there's Paul Wood. He was one, he was. I don't know if he's bigger, little poison. He was one of the poison boys. It was, it was, it was the winners. But um, and actually, there you go, Paul Moy. So Paul was the big the poisons. Or the poisons. Yep. The way was the little. Uh, Branch Ricky actually was with the Cardinals before he was with the Dodgers. He's the one who brought uh, Jackie to the Dodgers, but he was with them 20 years before. And in 1926, that's when he, again the Cardinals beat the Yankees. Okay, 28, they played him again, but this time the Yankees got him four straight. They didn't mess with him. They weren't missing around that time. And then 30, 31, and 34. 34, they won. 31, they won. But in 1930, they lost to the Philadelphia East. By the way, I, I just want to say. I love this uniform. 
It's amazing. Remember, it's folks, important. just want to say that Bob has never been to the Hall of Fame before until today. That's right. So it's not like he's strolled around this place 50 times and memorized everything. No, this is a lifetime of knowledge accumulated that he is able to share as he encounters the different that's different, why that's why we um, enjoy your show. Exhibits. Yes. And and I'll tell you what too. I can still see in my mind they don't have them in we used to have little cards. Not baseball cards, but they were little World Series cards. And they would have the characters in, in cartoon kind of form. And I can still see the 1926 card when I was little. And it has the four of a kind. You know, and the Yankees are giving the four of a kind to the Cardinals. And, and um, but, uh, it, it, oh, I'm sorry, 1920, yeah, it said 26. But, and they beat them four straight in 1928. And um, the Yankees won two years in a row. In 27 and 8, they didn't lose a game in the World Series. They were eating them. They beat the Pirates, beat the Cardinals. But the Cardinals got them in 26 because Larry, Larry got the big in the seventh game. There's Roger Swan, he was a superstar. This guy, Joe Medley, Dr. he won Triple Crown, I believe, in 1937. There it is. Okay. And no National Leaguer, I don't know if that's still intact, but no National Leaguer has ever won the Triple Crown since I won. I know that. Uh, uh, Cabrera won Miguel, but he's with, with the Tigers. He was American. Um, Carlos Stremski won in 1967, the triple crown. Okay, he, but he only batted 301. He was the lowest one ever with lowest average. Ever. But this guy was the last guy on that Cardinal team in 1937 that won a triple crown. And there's, I believe that's him and Brent Rick. So, and and they, and they had they had um. Dizzy on the team. Dizzy being the most all the short times. Okay, you got more. Okay, there's that elephant. There it is. There's the elephant. There's the old A's hat. They're Philadelphia. Don't forget. So there's Lefty Grove. He was a great pitcher, and I believe that may even be. I don't. Yeah, that's his. I think it's the ball, right? He signed it. And, Baseball uh, autograph by pitching sensation Lefty Grove. Lefty Grove. How about the old uh, uh, shin guards, huh? And, and, and the chest protector. Pretty amazing. Uh, Chicago Cubs established an unusual pattern of, by finishing on top every third year. Okay? 1929, they didn't win it. Good, but not good enough. No, 1932, they got in it. The Yankees took him out with Ruth and the shot. Okay, four straight. 1935, they played the Tigers. And the Tigers beat them in game, I want to say it's game seven, they took them out. And in 1938, they played the Yankees, and the Yankees just killed them. I think they, they beat them in the first game. But the Cubs, I mean, they had their moments in their time. And I love the hat and the union. Well, it was great to see the Cubs win it all a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good for the Cubbies. Oh, we're in the Detroit, the Detroit Tiger section. Okay. 34, they lost. I still remember the little tiger tail that the Cardinal tied together. Uh, in 35, they won. They beat, they beat, they beat, they beat the Cardinals, I believe. In 1940, well, they didn't quite win because um, Cincinnati won. So they didn't win. But, um, Gabby Hart, it was amazing. He was an amazing player. Uh, he was one of their he was one of their stars. Pat Wilson, okay. He has the most RBIs for one season. I want to say it's 191 or 190. There you go. And it's still a record to this day. Nobody's ever had. I, I believe that um Garrick had 184 or 187, but he but he is the all-time leader in RBIs for one to this day. He was an amazing player. He did it in 1930. I think. Let's check that. 1930, there it is. They batted 307. Uh, Charlie Geringer, I believe he was the uh, Detroit Tiger. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, 19. He um, he always consistently batted 321 in 20 World Series games. He was, he was great. School Boy well, was a pitcher. I remember ta- I remember people telling me about him. And Hank Greenberg was a superstar. For him. Um. Here's uh, the Giants. 
Okay, this is in the 30s. I know Mel Lott with his high leg kick when, when he was him and Ruth, when he um he would uh, lift his leg and generate power off that leg when he swung through. And here's the king, Carl Hubble. He had the screwball. He won the 1930. I want to say three World Series or 34. Um, and he. Uh, How about that New York Giants hat? It's nice. And you're, oh, it is nice. Yeah. I, you know what? I like the blue and then I do. I like it. Let's see. Uh, I believe he won in 30. I thought it was 33, but it couldn't be. Uh, we have Chris Lou Garrett's. Um, there's his hat. Oh, his final year. Yes, his jersey, his hat. That's 1939. Um, that's, uh, yeah, he was sick. And what boy was he? You know, it's funny because that jersey doesn't look all that big. And he was a pretty big guy. You could talk. Obviously, he was getting, it wasn't going anywhere. You know, he was getting weird. Um, okay, we got, uh, here's more Derek. Um, is, is a, oh, Joe McCarthy, that's right, the Yankees. He was the second winning man ever for the Yankees, and he was the most loved. Uh, I know Phil Rizzuto, you once said, uh, I love Joe McCarthy. I couldn't stand um, Casey Stan by him. And because he was always patient, he was good. He took over for uh, Miller Huggins when Miller died at the end of 1927. And he won a lot of titles. He won in 28, 32, 36, 7, 8, 9. They were four years in a row. Um, he won in 40, let's see, 41, 43, 41, uh, 47 and nine. It was 48, the, uh, uh the Indians. There's Jez Red Ruffy, one of his best pitchers. There's Joe. He had all these guys under him. And this is all their, their, um, equipment and their stuff they had back then. Six out of eight. That's a good run. <clears throat> right. And here's Bill Dickey. He was the catcher. He was actually in the Jay Bruce story. He played himself. Oh, it was it? Yeah. And and uh, he had, he was a three. You're talking about the movie? Yeah. Oh, back in, I think it's 94 with. No, uh, 40. He was no one for us. Oh, he was in a, oh, they acted together. Yeah. He, uh, he was actually in it. And, and uh, well, he was in the William Bendix movie. He put, William Bendix played Ruth. Okay. But. He, he played himself in the movie. He was a he was Yogi Bear before Yogi. He was great. Um, here's Jackie Robinson. Yeah, and the Dodgers. Uh, there, there's um, this is every year that you know they, they came so close and they kept falling to the X. They lost them in forty seven to forty nine, like I said. In 52, 53, they lost. The only year they won was right there. They won in Game Seven. Johnny Park is the, the, the statue we saw outside. Pitching, he won the last game. And that's all the players. That's Kevin Miller. That's, that's when that's did awesome. the Dodgers move out of Brooklyn? 58, 1958. And so did the Giants. They moved together. This is the old Disappearing Reese. He was a shortstop superstar. There's his uh, jersey and bats and gloves and shoes. Here's Jack. Major League Baseball has done much. That's there's a quote from Franklin Roosevelt right there. Major League Baseball has done as much as any one thing in this country to keep the spirit of the people together. That's right. He's you know he's absolutely right. Especially at that time, there's a war going on. He's dead right. Um, and he hears all the different stars of the past. How about Ralph Kramer? He was the third man announcer of the original three, but he was a heck of a hitter. I want to say, uh, kind of. Um, for like seven years, led the league in homers. He had 369 overall. Um, he could just flat out hit. He wasn't a great fielder, but there was the crown they gave him. He was actually an angel in the outfield as well that first movie years ago. But he was a great player. Sure. And I loved him as well as the Mets announcer. He was always a little. This is the um, this is the 40s. Uh, I think it was Cardinals. Uh, Ina Slaughter. These are pretty impressive. Um, all red here. Always. I love the bird. I love the bird looks good. That's a good one. And the double birds. Double birds good. Yep. 
and, and the players on this team, Johnny Bryce, he ended up playing on the eight years later. He helped them win in 1946. He was there in the five straight World Series. Because he, he was on the Yankees for 49 and 53, but he was also there with the cards. He was a great player. And they won in 46 because he won there too. The slaughter. I think he was the guy that scored from first base, if I remember right. Or he got the hit that drove the guy in. And Red was actually a manager when I was a little kid for the St. Louis Cardinals. He was a good player. Mm -hmm. And there you go. The Cardinals won uh, the last. And by the way, the Cardinals are the only team outside of the Yankees to have double digit World Series wins. It's, it, I think they have 10 or 11. Like that, they have. Um, That's incredible. Yeah, well, no, they're the only team that have a winning record against the Yankees in the World Series. And so, double digit. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's incredible. There's only two teams there's that only, have double digit there's championships. Only yeah, there's only two. It's not easy to win. You know, it's not easy to win. But, uh, and of course, here's their big star, uh, Stan the Man. The guy that's afraid of the dark hair. <laughs> this was his locker, actually. Locker. And there's the uh, uniform, the hats, the pants. Um, and that's his last game, if you want to f focus in on that. September 29th, 1963. That's the, uh, that was the score card. Um, the old world uniform, which is men with mares. Um, Lee McPhail. Who ended up being president of the American League at one time, I believe. Uh, yeah, there you go. He was uh, Nike GM and later he was president of the American League. I remember when he was president of the American League. Actually, I'm blue. I remember it. Um, and it was Phil, right? Yankee announcer, but more importantly, a great Yankee player. Underrated. Um, there's his glove. I'll tell you what, I don't know how he caught anything in that glove, but he was a great shortstop. He was MVP in 1950. And, there, and there's the boys partying. You want to see that? The terror three. Those are the guys that went out and got drunk every night and came. Next day, just won a, you know, every game, every day. <laughs> they partied a lot. Um, here's George Weiss. First, he was farm system director, general manager, the seven World Series. There's the O being you know, able to what's over and a million other things that he said that were actually pretty wise if you think about them. If you think he's goofy, but he's not. That was a genius. Um, hmm, it sounds like someone I know. I don't know. I don't know anybody like that. But anyway, um, Cleveland Indians interrupted the Yankees dominance in 48. They beat the Braves in the World Series. In 1954, they beat the Giants who were all world. And uh, they, they beat them four straight. I mean, that's what really made that over-the-shoulder catch everybody talks about. And the Chicago White Sox did likewise, right? In 1959, they played the um they, they they were in the they played the Dodgers the Dodgers beat them actually in the 59 series and here's the uniforms the really nice these uniforms that's Bob Lemon who ended up he was the last Yankee manager in the 70s until Derek Jeter got there to win a World Series. Bob Lemon 1978 yeah that's when he was a player though with the Indians he they had such a great pitching staff nobody wanted to face these guys nobody the Indians were really, really good, and I love their rules. And sad that they're not going to be the Indians anymore. It's ridiculous. But, What's going on? They're changing their name. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But you know, you, you don't change tradition. I don't care who gets the Um, It's right. You can't change the past because you weren't there, and you can't judge them because you. Everybody don't want to be judged, but you're judging people in the past. It's a joke. Um, here's Robin Roberts uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's a great pitcher. He did not win in 19. 50, they played the Yankees, got swept four straight. Um, but they called them the Whiz Kids, and they were all young, you know. And the, but the Yankees were the veterans, and they destroyed them. And here's a team picture. Here's a picture of the team back then. See, and there you go, the Whiz Kids. Whiz Kids. Yep. And you said they were the youngest team in that year? Yes, they were all kids, pretty much. They're very young, and everybody called them the Whiskeys. And nobody really thought they were going to do what they did. They just started tearing it up. They won the American National League pennant. They played the Yankees and got destroyed. They lost four straight. They got hot until they met the juggernaut. Uh, here's the 1954 with This is Morning Irvin and Willie Mays. And Willie and Mays. There he is. And, uh, and here's Leo. I'm going to the Russian. 
I, the, um, Monty Irving's jersey right there. There's his jersey. He was on that team. I love the New York. That's so nice. He was on that 54 team when they beat the Cleveland Indians. By the way, Cleveland Indians in 1954 won 111 games. No one talks about that. The Yankees that year won 110 games. Finished one game back but didn't make a playoff because you had to finish in first place like it should be today. And like it was in baseball for years. They ended up not making it. The Indians did. And then the Giants smacked them out four straight. 